In this video I want to show you some ways how to do configuration in Quarkus version 2 with a few more complex examples. If you're using Quarkus then you're probably aware of how to inject configuration values into our code using this at config property annotation which is already very helpful so if we have a look at the configuration reference in the guides we well probably know that there are some uh, config sources and we typically start with something like a properties file and there is a way how to inject the configuration values into our code which is already very handy. However, there's also a way how to inject something that is a little bit more complex. For example, if our application, um, if the configuration consists of more hierarchical values or some list uh, structures and things like that. And we can actually do this. And in Quarkus version 2, uh, we are now advised to use um, another annotation, another mechanism that is called config um, mapping. What I will show you is my... Um, playground project, my coffee playground project, just to give you some examples. And assuming we have something like this in our application, that we want to configure some stuff like nested values. So I have something like complex.coffee, I have some simple string values, and I also have some lists. So this is interesting. We're able to use these indexed values to represent something like list structures, even in a plain application properties file. It's also possible to do something like comma separated values in a single value. However, this obviously is more uh, flexible. And it's also possible to use nested structures like hierarchical values. And now the cool thing is we have a way to map this structure into actual um, hierarchies in our Java code, in our Java types. So how this works, I want to show you just a very basic example in a, a resource here, so uh, real quick. I'm gonna code a method, um, in this case actually a JAX-RS method, to just enable us to access uh, this configuration. And then I also quickly, um, I call this coffee shop, I'm gonna write um, another class that then should access our complex configuration and how this works. So just real quick, I say config something like dot get config a method that I'm going to create that just returns a string and assuming this should be an application scoped bean assuming that now this should access our complex configuration what we can do in this case I can create a class or actually an interface that I call complex configuration it will be an interface that will be annotated with config mapping and this is an, an annotation that comes from smallry config that implements microprofile config, uh, config. And this allows us to map these types or to map um, complex configuration values into types, especially here interfaces. I can just specify an interface and I can say, well, the config mapping should start with, um, well, some root, for example, some root prefix when I uh, specify a prefix something like complex and then complex dot and all of these values here including the nested values can be injected or made accessible using methods. So I will just start with the first one to get started coffee dot um, complex dot coffee and what I will do I specify just a method in this interface and that's it. And I don't care about, well, who's going to implement this interface. This will be done by the runtime later on. So I just say, please inject such um, a type. And now the difference is I don't use config property. I just use at inject. So that is treated as a regular bean. And then I can say configuration.coffee. And now I expect that this uh, configured value is accessible. So let's see. I usually start my application with this Quarkus dev mode because that is just easy to start up and enables us to later on check for some code changes. And now let's see, I can access this using, for example, this for local host 8080 coffee config. And it says, well, coffee. Okay. So just to be sure that this works, I can actually just change it. So as usual, this will take care of the changes in my configuration and it just says coffee exclamation mark. All right, 
But now the interesting thing is, because that is not really something new, how to inject something that is um, a list structure. So assuming this is an indexed value, as you can see here, 0, 1, 2, I can say, well, coffee.list should actually be a list, in this case, a list of strings. All right, so we can do this. We assuming we have this list here. Should be, of course, a Java util list. And then I would like to inject and use this. So now just for simplicity, I say, well, please output these values and system out coffee and list just to see whether all of this works. And then we can already try it out. And after restart, I see, well, this is the coffee exclamation mark value and this is the list. So that is just the dot two string method of my list of these three values that are configured. So this is already very helpful to just um, inject something here. Um, by the way, this still would work with uh, config uh, properties if we have uh, simple uh, single properties. But once you have, you know, multiple uh, properties or nested properties within a more complex configuration type, it is just a little bit less code or is better organized in um, to introduce a type here, such as this interface. And now it gets more interesting. We can also use this for nested types, such as complex dot some other type dot something. So we could say, well, this is like a hierarchy. This is like um, another root of my, well, configuration structure. And I could represent this to say, well, I would like to have some other type. And I call this some other. So this is also, if you want to have a look specified in the, um, in the guide here, mapping configuration to objects, and then we end up at this page here which actually shows config mapping. Now, if you have uh, been using Quarkus in a similar way like that before, you maybe know about add config properties, but since uh, Quarkus version two, that is now deprecated. So config properties worked very similar or similarly. Um, it is somewhat, it was uh, more connected to this add config um, property. So um, we could use this to also then change uh, some values here, uh, but now, um, it is, well, just recommended to use config mapping instead. So this type is already deprecated. All right, so that's why now we can use at config mapping and it will tell us, well, how all of this then works. So for example, we can use the names in this strategy where, um, which uses the so-called uh, kebab uh, case with the hyphen or, or dash in between. So we use this to say some minus other, and I use that naming here. And what is that type? Well, actually I can just uh, create something like um, an inner class, or in this, uh, this case, something like an interface, some other. And now that is the nested type that I can use to again inject now one dot further coffee and list again. So actually this is a similar structure here, but just in a different type, in the nested type, and then quite quickly here, I can create these structures here as well and then use them accordingly. So let's enable this as well. And then I say, well, configuration dot some other dot coffee and configuration dot some other dot list to just use all of these four values that I would like to have. And now let's try this out. Let's access this resource again. And now we see, well, coffee is this one list some other is this and the list of that is that. So now we see that all of these values are available and we can inject this complex structure into our code quite easily and quite well nicely because now it's just encapsulated into this type. So I can use that type, I can inject it with add inject and I use this config mapping. Then if you would like to have a look at your at the documentation, you also will see, well, I could um, change, for example, the, um, the name or the, um, uh, the type with a con uh, converter. So it has this add with name um, annotation, which works just a little bit differently than, than before with the add config properties. So this comes from a small rye config, but you can have a look at the 
uh, at the documentation how this works, but usually that shouldn't be a problem because we well can specify our configuration classes or there shouldn't be uh, much of a, uh, of a mismatch. And in this way, we can inject this and we can use this here. One more thing that I now want to show you is that we can actually use a different configuration type rather than um, dot properties files, which uses, for example, a YAML format. And that is, of course, a question whether you're a fan of the YAML format, but for some complex structures or hierarchical structures, it might make sense, like here, for example. So assuming we would like to do this, let's try this out, how this would work. And what I will do, I will just copy that file into an application.yaml and I actually will get rid of the other one. So now this should be a YAML file and how this works while well, I now have to change the structure. So now complex, for example, has to be um, written only once and I say, well, this should be removed and changed here accordingly and some other the same. So I basically want to say, well, it should look similar to this. I will now just change everything in, in this value. Just bear with me with a second until I change the structure here. Uh, of course, it helps if I'm using my um, if I'm using my Vim uh, mapping and keyboard concept. So this should be it. And then the list here is similar to before. Let's say I would like to have this, this, this. And now if I didn't make some mistakes, this should be it basically. So we have one object uh, complex here which has three properties, com coffee list and this nested object, some other which has two properties here. So this should basically hopefully work. What we now also have to do is we have to actually add a dependency to our POMXML and this dependency uh, will just make sure that our YAML works. So what we do, IO Quarkus, we add, it's called Quarkus config um, YAML and with this, we just uh, make sure that the YAML file will be uh, taken and that all of that will be made accessible. And then hopefully, let's see whether everything worked. So now I just will restart the Quarkus dev mode and we will see whether the configuration now will be loaded from that value. So if I didn't make a mistake, the structure should be the same. So st still the nested structure of these nested configuration values and then the list. So let's see in this version of Quarkus that I'm using. This still works as expected or as we hoped for. And just to make sure that we didn't take anything else, I will have two changes here. And then we see whether the expected output now also includes these changes in the YAML files. So that is a way how to configure Quarkus with some more complex configuration examples with nested values, with list structures, and how to map them into our code using at config mapping. I hope this was helpful. If so, I would really appreciate if you liked the video. You can check out my workshops on uh, Quarkus. And thanks a lot for watching.